Hi and welcome to another video in the RHCSA video series. Today's video is on start and stop services and configure services to start automatically at boot. So essentially we're going to be using a system CTL uh, which I have covered in previous videos but this will be more of a um, catch up on this um, as we know a bit more about services etc. Um, but there will be a couple of things like is enabled, is, is failed that can be useful to mention here. Okay, cool. So as always, we go to the terminal. We used to sudo, so that's the sudo was not come on. Okay. So to start an application, I think we're all familiar with it, but system CTL start and then the application name. It's normally dot service, but uh, system CTL is clever enough to know that just use the short name. If I just click and it start there, that will start the application. Next, it would be to stop the application. So we can just stop. And then we can do a status to see the current running state. And we can see it's currently stopped. It's loaded, but inactive. So we can do a start and then we can do a status event. We get a nice green light there, which is good. Okay, so we can also, if we've, uh, for example, made changes to the configuration of the application, perhaps uh, a good example would be something like Apache uh, web server, or another name, maybe made a change to the HTTP the e conf uh, on the server. Uh, you would then need to reload the application, either restart the application or ask the application to reread its configuration. So if you did a reread of the configuration, then you have to restart the whole application. Uh, so this can be a lot quicker than restarting the whole, whole service. So there is an option, system CTL reload, and then the application name. So not every application is able to reload, and in this case we're not. So we can actually run system CTL reload or restart, and then the application name. So either way, it will restart the application or reload the configuration. We can check the status, and we can last see when it last read its service configuration. And when it's just started running, so it's just literally just restarted in this case, because we know it's not applicable for this particular unit. Okay, so that's covering off the starting and stopping with the application. The next thing would be to um, actually enable the application. So system CTR enable, and then the application name. So this um, will read the ATD's uh, configuration file. Uh, which is specifically for system uh, system CTR, and that you'll read that and have a look and see um, which pro uh, which operating system profiles are actually relevant. So, is it in like a single user mode that we can use this application, or is it a multi user mode, or is it just in a graphical target, so graphical interface we use? So, it depends on that. It will be so. There's also um, connections between the different targets. So between a multi-user target and graphical target is the graphical target will use all the multi-user user functions, but also have additional graphical interfaces uh, applications over the top. So you have all that linking between the two, between a lot of them. So the stuff is obviously in the single user mode that's using multi and then it's using the graphical. So it goes all the way through. And obviously, you can have very cut down versions if you wanted to just like a random web server service and, and not much else, obviously, networking and sort of thing. So, we can do uh, to enable one particular application that's not been enabled before, we can do a system CTO enable and then the application name. And then I'll add it to uh, run uh, on the on boot. We can do um, a disable to remove it from boot. And you can see it's just removed that from multi-user target, which makes sense because you have to have a multi-user environment to use this ATD. 
Um, so that makes sense. We can just add it back in and we can see they actually had some uh, actions tab. And we can check uh, is the application actually enabled? So system CTL is enabled. And then the application name again. And you can see it's returned enabled. And then we can check is failed. So is it actually working since we? And we can see it's active, which is great. Okay, so simple stuff to check. Um, and now let's clear the screen. Let's have a look at the ATT service uh, system deconfiguration file. So system CTL at ATD service. You can see the configuration there. So it's got a bit of a description about what it is. Um, you can tell you can you've got some after. So after it runs that, it will actually run these uh, additional units. So additional services will be run as part of that. There's the environmental uh, environment files. What it's going to do to actually start this service. Um, and we've also got where it's wanted by. So you can see multi user target. So at the very minimum, the multi user target is required uh, to have this application run in this case. Okay, that's pretty simple. So we can also then do a system CTL list hyphen dependencies and then the service. And it gives you all the dependencies for this service. So it can be pretty in depth, depends on the service, of course. So some services are simpler than others, but this relies on a lot of services. So you can see all of it listed there and it's a running or failed or inactive. Are these little lights? Are. Some will be inactive. Um, there could be dependencies if you use a particular service, like maybe a particular mounting type or something like that. But, um, but they will be there mentioned as inactive or disabled or whatever. So that's cool. But maybe the application not starting, you can see uh, all the services that it relies on. And then you can have a look at oh, that particular services in running. And you can see why that service is running. Keep going, da, 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 until you find the right course. Okay, um, the final thing I want to cover is mask option. So if you want to disable an application from running from it by anyone, by any other users of the system, and also stop you from running the boot, you can just do a mask. And that will just mask the service from running. And so next reboot, your service won't, won't be able to start, and any system CTO start or uh, messages will just not work anymore. So we can try that now. Let's do stop first. Okay, and now if we try and do start, we cannot start this mask, which makes sense. So to reverse that, we just do an unmask, it's pretty simple. And then it will be back to how it was previous. And so we can double check that. So we can do is enabled. Check if it's enabled for boot. It's enabled, and then we can just do a system CTR start and then the service name, and it should all start up again. We can just do status, and it's all running again. That is pretty much it. That's a, it's a pretty uh, quick one because we've covered a lot of this previously. Um, but yeah, hopefully, it's another helpful video for you. Um, as always, I've put the uh, details of the Sophos antivirus. Um, the hosting uh, my tube uh, public page for merchandise and the Kofi page with all the options to drop me a small donations. Uh, thanks for watching my videos once again. Um, please subscribe, it means a lot to me. Um, like the video if you find it useful. Um, also, hit, hit the notification bell if you want to be notified of my videos because they're pretty sporadic sometimes. Yep, thanks again for watching. Uh, catch you in the next video. Thank you.